Hello everyone, I'm uh, Lewis Corner, I'm Editorial Director of Gay Times, and welcome to this very special instalment of Undistance. And for those of you who don't know, um, Undistance is a new digital festival that we've started to help bring the community together during this time of social distancing and self-isolation. And this evening we're going to have Grace and Chance, if I can just get his... I'm going to try and add him now. He's just waiting for him to request to join the thing. Two seconds. Waiting for Grayson Chance. Hello. Hello, Hello Grayson. How are you? I, I'm good. Okay, so I, I've just posted on Twitter that I had a bit of breaking news, and there's a reason why I'm propped up on pillows right now and oh, in no. bed. Uh oh, how did you do that? So, um, the news is it's not a broken arm. However, I've learned so much about my arm's anatomy within the past 12 hours. Um, I was fucking rollerblading, Lewis, <sighs> out of uh. all things. Great socially job. distanced six feet away from everybody and we'd been rollerblading for like an hour things were going well and then we uh reached a bit of a skate park and i tried to do a trick on a rail and i have a radial fracture oh, so no. after we get off the phone i'm going back to be put in a cast for six to eight weeks well i mean at least we're in self-isolation do you know what i mean at least you're gonna have time <laughs> no. to recover well, what's been funny about it is so today I've been going through sort of the loops of this. And then, you know, it's interesting in this time too, like having a medical emergency that's not related um, to anything with the virus. And so you go in, you have to have the mask, the gloves on the whole nine yards. Um, but I felt like the biggest idiot going in today and then being like, how did you, what's up with your arm? And you're like, oh, I was just rollerblading. Um, and this has happened now. But Everyone within my team, and I've been, you know, FaceTiming and talking to people, everybody has been so stressed out today, and I'm the one who's keeping calm, going, guys, we're all good, it's going to be okay. Have you been rollerblading long? Or is it, are, you a new, are you a newbie to it? No, I'm like, I'm quite good at it. But last night, I, uh, like I said, I thought that I could do a trick on a rail. No. Didn't happen. Didn't work out. So didn't I'm happen. going to learn how to play the piano in my cast, and then I'm going to learn how to also do my entire life with my non-dominant hand. So I will keep you all very, very posted. <laughs> That's going to be interesting times for you going ahead. Yes. Um, congratulations on the launch of your cover today, though. At least there's some, something so positive much. that happened. Yes. Congratulations to us. Yes. How, uh, do you like the cover? Are you happy with the reaction? It seems to be getting a really good reaction. I've been so happy and, and you know, uh, for those of you who don't know in the live stream, uh, Lewis was not only on set the day that we were shooting in London a few months ago, but, you know, we also got to get to know each other and, and talk through our interview and, you know, Gay Times has been, you know, so loyal and, and so kind to me um, in times of my career when no one was really around and no one was there. So uh, to have that cover come out today and uh so yeah have a silver lining during all this it felt really good and i know all the fans really love it um too so like i said save a horse ride a gay instead um, i'm, <laughs> I I'm love very excited well. about this one yeah and i love the are you a fan of the cover look like we love the little packer raban polka dot oh absolutely moment. well remember when we were shooting we were all we were just having way too much fun and we were all like okay this is probably going to be it yeah yeah we knew we knew um and since that time obviously the world's become a very different place completely different i mean apart from rollerblading what have you been doing to kind of entertain yourself during self-isolation well so right now i'm in uh oklahoma city um which is uh you know sort of a bit away from uh you know the epicenters um here in the state so you know, life is still very, very different here, but it's, a, I, I guess, a bit more relaxed, um, you know, but what I've been doing is just taking the time to stay at home and to really kind of just work on my record. Um, you know, I've, I've had like, 
a large collection of songs now for for a minute and I've just been working on uh, finalizing things and getting it ready. And so I've been really utilizing the time to be creative. Um, and, you know, after touring so much of last year, you know, I think I've been wanting to use this time to study, to read about the artists that inspire me and, and to figure out how I can, uh, you know, go back into the year when we are allowed to and when everything is safe and, and really put on a good show. So I've been trying to stay as productive as possible, but um, it's tricky and it's hard and you have your good days and your bad days. And um, even though I broke a bone today, it's still a good day. Yeah, of course. And I know when I spoke to you, you were kind of, the album was pretty much there, right? So uh -huh. are you are you using this time to maybe jam a few more songs in there? Or yeah. are, are you kind of thinking about the next record after? How How do you balance that? For me right now, it's been a lot of uh, just sitting with everything and really uh, sort of thinking about the story that the album is telling. Um, you know, whether or not it's it's the best thing, I, I, you know, view my career sort of in album cycles. And I like to take this time to really sort of tell a story with every record. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Portraits, my last album was incredibly honest and, and vulnerable, sort of talking about a relationship that you know, I was going through and had went through at the time. And I think this record was, you know, way more self-reflective and, and me sort of looking inward uh, towards myself and, and how I was reacting to the life that, you know, I've been living the past year. So this this time now to just sit with the music and, and really think about, OK, how is it going to be sequenced? Um, you know, what do I want the videos to look like? Um, you know, what? how is everything going to roll out? Or what is the formatting going to be? Um, that's what I've been focusing on. And, and I think this record, I think the themes are going to um, surprise a lot of people. Um, and I think it's uh, it's going to start some very interesting conversations, which uh, I think I'm ready for, but uh, we'll see. Okay. Can't wait to hear that. And obviously you were going to tour Europe through April, but that no. got postponed. I mean, uh, do you know when you could get to reschedule those dates yet? Are you still working on that for European yeah. fans? So right now, um, everything is rescheduled for October. Um, and so that was, you know, something that we, we had to decide whether or not to pull um, the trigger on the tour rather quickly. And, um, you know, behind the scenes, I was sort of advocating. I was like, I would rather um, be more cautious and pull the dates and be able to have new ones immediately for the fans mm. than, you know, keep on waiting and hope that something was going to get better. So... Um, it was really, it was really difficult um, because, you know, the fans know that I, I'm addicted to performing live. I love it. It's, it's where I feel the most at home. So to know that we were supposed to be in, um, I believe we were supposed to be in Madrid tonight um, playing. It's, uh, it's, it's really hard, but we will, uh, we'll be there in the fall. Yeah. And you'll have loads of new music, so... Yeah, and it gives me a chance too to now come back to Europe and play the full album or the new album in full, mm. um, which I'm excited about. And uh, so, yeah, we'll see everybody for that tour. Um, so you're on the cover. I've got it here, by the way. Oh my I've gosh, I've today. just ordered a ton and, and I was texting my family and, and everything. <laughs> it looks amazing. Yeah, no, it looks really, really good. All the pictures have come out really, really well inside. <laughs> Um, so in my editor's letter for this issue, because it's music themed, I kind of spoke around, about how I connected with George Michael's uh, mm -hmm. music when I was younger. And he was the first person I realised that made me realise that gay was a thing, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I, before that moment, I never knew that two guys could love each other romantically. Um, so I wanted to know from, from you, who was your first queer idol? What was your first memory of that clicking for you, that that was a... a a thing yeah well i remember i i remember like listening to elton john when i was younger and i remember th those conversations happening right where um you know a, a elton john would a song would come on and you know somebody would say something about him being gay right so mm. there was an acknowledgement of that from sort of a young age and me knowing that you know he was a gay artist and a very prominent one as well but in many ways uh for me it was gaga you know, for me, like, she was the one that I felt, you know, so connected um, the community together. And in so many ways sort of stood um, as as like a leader of these people saying, you know, um, you're okay, you, you're, you're fine, you're allowed to be here. People, people don't forget, but or, or people forget, but, 
in 2010 you know, when she was on the Monster Ball tour, you know, some of the dialogues and some of the things that she was saying at the time was very, you know, questionable mm -hmm. at best, you know, screaming into the mic, uh, telling kids that they're okay and that the people outside of the arena are the fucking crazy ones, all those things, right? Yeah. So I think for me in many ways, she was the one that, you know, I think helped me just not only as an artist, but as a gay person too, to really just come to terms with, um, you know, being vulnerable and being um, honest within within my art. And it took me years to get there, but she helped out a lot. And there's a whole generation of queer people there that kind of owe that to Gaga, right? Oh, absolutely. And these younger kids now are forgetting, let me tell you, <laughs> I'm only 22, but I'll call out that bullshit whenever I see it. <laughs> Were you gutted that Chromatica had to get pushed back? I think it was 1000% um, the right call. Um, yeah. I, I know her and, you know, I feel like I, I know her sort of mental process. And I think she, everything is, was ready for the record. You know, they were ready to push go on it, but she wants to be able to do all the things around album promo that make it so um, legendary and make it, you know, really enforce that era. Um, sure. You know, for Gaga, it's not just about you know what's happening on stage it's about what she's walking out of the hotel room in and and xyz and so um i i understand and i think it was the right call and um we patiently patiently wait yeah i will get the full experience when the time is right yes absolutely right um today we asked fans to submit some questions so i've got oh. some here in front of me uh -oh. so i'm going to go okay. for a few fan questions don't <laughs> worry i've kept all the nice i've kept all the good ones in there okay, were there okay, were okay. Some, there were some questionable ones <laughs> no worry, I'm taking my mic. Um, so first of all, fans are really eager to know, what can we expect from this new album? Um, well, so you and I talked a lot about it, uh, too, in our interview, but um, this record is, I, I would say it's similar to Portraits in, in terms of the theme of, of just, it's, it's really me um, being honest. It's really me sort of um, describing my year, what has uh, been happening and, and how I've been sort of uh, interacting with myself on the road and, and with my different relationships. Um, and there is, you know, I think a lot of vulnerability in this album. And there are topics that I've never talked about before. I've, n I've never been open about um, things that I, you know, would have never dreamed of even, even saying and even opening up about years ago, but that we, we did on this record. One of the most important songs for me is a song called Bad to Myself. Um, and that song is really about uh, sort of some of my self-destructive tendencies, you know, that I've had to deal with um, in my life. So this this album to me feels like um, a splash of cold water uh, to the face and, and me kind of looking in the mirror and, and addressing a bunch of things. So I would say it's incredibly honest and, and very vulnerable. Cool. And as we spoke about in the interview as well, you've worked with Teddy Geiger really closely on this. Yes. Which is just great. She's absolutely fantastic. So... Yeah, she's the best producer in the world. And, um, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been living with um, all of the music so much in these past few weeks. And I just, oh, I can't wait to share it. Which brings you to, me to the next question. When can we hear your new music? Asks one yes. fan. Well, you know, in the same way that all artists right now are thinking about, okay, what is the best way to sort of handle this? What is the best way to sort of navigate it? Um, we are going to be releasing a new song um, at the end of April. Um, that's pretty much confirmed. I've just changed what song that was, though, yesterday. Um, yeah, we, we sort of just got on the phone and I was like, scrap it all. Um, and we're, we're going to go back to the drawing board. So that, that always stresses everybody out. But that's very typical me. Um, and I would say the album now was originally supposed to come out around May. But I think I'm going to push it back um, a bit. Uh, deeper into the summer but I promise all the fans that you will be um, as they like to say they will be properly fed <laughs> throughout the past <laughs> few months I promise so I would say the summer um one fans asked what is your favorite song at the moment favorite song of mine or just in general in general I think yeah oh What's your favorite okay. song this is a really you know I've been I've been a perfume genius fan and a Mike Hadris fan for ever um he has a new song right now called describe that just sounds like 
the 90s it sounds like just some really hard hitting rock music and i love him forever and i'm so inspired by him so i would say that and of course stupid love come on oh, of course good answer easy good answer i haven't checked out the new dua lipa yet but i'm that's on my to-do list for tonight it's very good yes it's very, very i believe good. it um how are you staying positive during these times that's a really good question and you know i've been as everybody has been, you know, sort of trying to figure this out and, um, you know, trying to find the things that are uh, going to keep me going throughout the quarantine, right? And I think the most important thing is really just trying to stay as, um, you know, connected to my friends as possible. So FaceTiming all the time, you know, getting on um, Netflix parties. Uh, truly, like, this whole thing has just led to a lot of live streaming and a lot of drinking with my friends. Um, on these live streams <laughs> at 8 p.m. We just get on a Zoom call and everyone is just wasted by 10. Um, so that's been really fun. Have you been and doing the house party app? Yes, yes, yes. All the things. My my friends are a bit better at it than me, but um, I just always follow that link wherever I need to go. Um, and I've also, outside of, you know, so trying to stay creative, uh, we have been blessed. The weather has been really, really nice here. And um, you know, keeping following all the rules, of course, but I've been spending a lot of time outside um, and obviously breaking bones. Breaking bones, yeah. Breaking Have bones. you watched um, Tiger King on Netflix? Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about <laughs> okay. this. Okay, okay, so let's go. I'm from Oklahoma, born and yep. raised, right? Joe Exotic is no new figure to us. We've known of him forever. Um, I... I had been working on a campaign when I was in school. So this was like three or four years ago now at this point when I was back in college and he ran for governor, if you yeah. can believe it. Yeah. Ran for it's governor. all in the documentary. Yes, yeah, it's all in the documentary. And so the candidate that I was working for was very professional, you know, good, clean cut Democrat, nice, nice guy. And uh, as we were leaving one of the debates, uh, Joe Exotic sort of pulled me aside and he said, hey, hey, you, you over there. And I remember, and I was like in a suit, like, you know, and so I'm doing my thing and, and I look over, I'm like, hey, like, what's going on? And and he looks at me and he like gives me an up down, right, which is incredibly creepy, you know, to come from him. And he's like, hey, you should come uh, to my zoo and see my tigers. They love gays. And he said that to me. And I just, I died. I was like, who is this guy? What's going on? <laughs> And uh, so we've known of him forever. Um, people have been asking, they're like, or people will text me and they'll, and they'll say, oh, you know, obviously this is not like an accurate representation of Oklahoma. And I argue against that. I think it's an absolute accurate representation. We are all fucking crazy here. <laughs> we will cut you. We will push you down. We will raise tigers whenever we want. So we'll do whatever we want in Oklahoma. This is no man's land. So you should be scared because we'll do some crazy shit. <laughs> when's, when's your Muller era going to come? It, it might, I, I, potentially at the end of this quarantine. Oh, great. <laughs> Can't wait. Album artwork, you with the mullets. Absolutely, absolutely. But I want to raise lions because I'm a Leo. No, no tigers. <laughs> um, you've kind of touched upon this already, but one fan has asked, what do you think people will be surprised to hear on your new album? Mm -hmm. um there's there's one one topic in particular and and you know i'm not going to go in to too much detail here um but there's there's one conversation that i've you know been waiting to have for a long time um and that will be that will be one that's going to come up on this record um and i'll uh i'll just leave it at that but there's just there's going to be a lot of i think a lot of surprises uh on this new album okay okay um, another fan has asked, could you please share the story behind your new song, The Champion? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we just, uh, I had written that literally last week um, and, you know, kind of very quickly added it to the album. And the song is really about uh, sort of the on and off switch of being on stage and then getting uh, getting done at the end of the night uh, and going back to the uh to the quiet hotel room, right? The dark hotel room. Um, and it's sort of uh, about a confidence struggle as well, that on certain nights you feel 
so like the champion you feel so in your stride so ready to go and then on other nights you feel like you'll never be the champion and then on certain nights you feel like you're going to die being the champion and trying to be the champion um and it was a song i knew that i really wanted to write about the touring and about you know the effects that that has on the artist and and sort of just has uh, the effects that it has on a creative person too and uh that song is uh that's that's what it's about cool um i know you've got a good answer for this because we kind of briefly spoke about it during the interview but what are you doing to support queer liberation yeah well doing you know anything that i can um a lot of you know what i try um to do just being from where i'm from right um like i joke about it i say okay oklahoma's crazy and all these things but um you know oklahoma is representative of a lot of america um, you know, it's, it's sort of middle America. It's a lot of people call it flyover country. Um, and what we see happen a lot is on local levels, you know, things are, you know, livable, um, for LGBTQ plus people, but there's still just a lot of issues and a lot of things that can, uh, be fixed and, and things that need help. And so I try to focus my attention locally as much as I can. Um, so working with local organizations here in my city, um, you know, trying to reach out to, you know, sort of underprivileged parts of the community, um, and especially to here in Oklahoma, really supporting the trans community as much as possible. Um, you know, and in the middle of America, we see on a constant basis, uh, trans murders all the time, and especially trans youth murders. Um, and so that's been an area that I've been, you know, trying to shed a lot of light on and just talk, um, talk more about you know, I think I, I saw the quote that, that you had from the article, and I was so glad that you put this in here. But, you know, it truly does feel like sometimes we're, there's this group of letters, and there's just so much space in between that there's not a lot of unity, there's not a lot of togetherness. And, and I think that's what we need to focus on so much right now um, with this next generation coming up, because, you know, we're the generation after, you know, us, right, is going to see a world that is seemingly very accepting um, on a legal standpoint, things are going to be better, but there are still going to be so many issues and so many problems and we need to have a unified front. So um, I guess that's a long answer, but I think just locally, I try to um, put a lot of attention into my city. And when it comes to, you know, the trans community, it's trans people who have been vital in our journey to this point in all the rights that we won and fought for so far. So we need to be great allies to them now 1, and help them through this time because mm -hmm. it's absolutely awful for trans people out there at the moment and they need yeah. our support and they need us to educate people that don't understand they should not have the emotional labor to do it. It shouldn't be on them to always do it. It should be us helping support One, them to get through that. 1000%. And I think also to just asking honest questions, I, I think people are so um, intimidated and so scared sometimes to... Um, you know, ask questions that are that are truly just on their mind, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and that that's the thing about when you're able to have friendships and, and relationships with trans people, um, you know, have that honest dialogue. If there's if there's something that you honestly just don't know, um, you don't know the answer to, you don't know the process of it, ask this person um, because they're likely very willing to tell you and they're likely definitely not going to be offended. Um, so I think that's important, too, for just carrying on the narrative and, and making sure that the spread of information is correct and right. Yeah. Um, you always look so effortlessly cool. Where do you get your <laughs> fashion inspiration from? Wrong. Wrong. False. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there's one person that I have to thank as I'm trying to make sure my Dr. Pepper hat looks okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I had to make sure I, I very quickly took a shower before this because I'm going to get the cast on right after this. And I'm so like, when will I be able, able to shower now? Like, how does this work? Like, I have so many questions, but okay. Um, <laughs> You'll find out soon. I will find out soon enough. <laughs> yeah. um, my, uh, you know, my confidant and the person that has taught me so much in terms of styling and in terms of fashion is uh, my stylist, Michaela McClure. Um, who's from Oklahoma and her and I have now been working together for, I guess like now like two years, something along those lines, but she has taught me so much just about, um, we joke about it, but dressing in, 
you know, going out for the day, it's, it's like you, you have to edit constant, constant editing. So, you know, maybe try in an outfit, look at it and then, you know, look at every part of it. And, and what is the outfit saying? What is the intention behind the clothes? What is the purpose of it? What is the mood that you're trying to set? Um, for this album cycle where we're at right now, um, you know, Michaela and I have had long conversations over, you know, what is the theme? How is it tying back into the music? Um, you know, making sure that everything it feels intentional. Um, so I have her to thank. And honestly, I if I could buy all of St. Laurent, I, I would. I can't. But I also <laughs> have to very much so thank St. Laurent for, for everything, for making me look cool. <laughs> I remember when we were on set for the shoot, you were like, I keep having uh, calls back home being like, can I buy this? Because you would kind of stop yourself from <laughs> shopping all over Europe. Every single shop you're going in, you I want know, to buy something I new. Know. I, I, will, I will die bankrupt, but with really good shoes, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, one more question from fans. Mm -hmm. um, how can I overcome the fear of vulnerability and share my writing with people? Hmm. Damn, that's a great question. I I don't know if I have a great answer. I I think it's all about I think it's all about finding that confidence in yourself and I think it's also to I think once you recognize you you have to you have to place a purposeness within the creativity meaning like for me you know and I I always say this and I don't think the fans get offended by it but you know I primarily and solely make music kind of for myself it's kind of a selfish endeavor um because it's the only way that i know how to sort of just get through life and to get through um issues and problems that i'm going through and and to calm myself down i just i i go to the piano and and that's that's how i get through so i think for someone if they feel this sort of anxiety and this pressure um of you know can i share this you know what's going to happen from it i think they need to think about why do they want to share it um and maybe look for that answer first and and see what happens but um it's hard and and i understand it and i get it but i would just encourage them to keep on going and maybe one day it, it does happen where they can release things out great answer Thanks. nice note to finish on yeah yeah absolutely thank you so much for talking to me today thank you and and truly to, to everyone on here again to you know i've been saying this but um, stay healthy, follow the rules right now, more important than ever, yeah. um, and stay positive, stay optimistic. Um, we're going to get through this. The world has seen some really dark times through the span of history. This is one of them, um, but it's temporary. Um, and we will, uh, we're going to be stronger than ever after this. We are indeed. And your fans can now watch your performance of yes. Dancing Next to Me at the Piano, done pre- yes. Pre-bone break. We did this in the studio yesterday, so you can now watch that. I believe it's on the IGTV on your guys' page, yeah, it's right? going to be on our main IGTV Perfect. straight after this, so people can go over there and watch that. Yes. Um, congratulations on that single as well. Thank I, you, you so know, much. The streaming numbers have been so good on it. Everyone's loving it, and um, we'll see you later in the year when you're back on tour after all this. Yes, absolutely. No, hold on. I want to say one more thing too. What you can also do is you can also get online and you can buy a physical copy of this cover and of this magazine because it this looks one. so damn beautiful. So get on that. Yes, you should before they sell out. Awesome. I'm going to go Amazing. get a cast now. Yes. I hope you have a speedy recovery. <laughs> Look after yourself. Thank you so much. Bye, Lewis. See you, Grayson. Bye-bye.